Now in the latter stage of his career, Sonny Liston meets the Bayonne bleeder, Chuck Wepner. Jersey City, 29th of June, 1970. The Jersey City Armoury is the venue, and here in the first round, Liston in his 54th professional fight. Still claims to be only 38. Many judges think he's considerably older. Chuck Wepner at six foot five. You can see he has considerable height reach advantage. But Wepner's big problem always is tendency to cut. They call him the Bayon Bleeder because of that. And the one thing Liston's been able to do throughout his career is really throw that left jab fast and accurate. 17 years as a professional now, Sonny Liston. Chuck Wetner blasted out in 1969 by George Foreman in only his fourth professional fight, but he started fast here against Liston. Wetner does have a big left hook, that's his danger punch. Comes into this contest as the New Jersey heavyweight champion, and of course is the local man. And he'll get considerable support from this crowd, which includes notable celebrities. Muhammad Ali's at ringside, signing autographs for those who call him Ali and studiously refusing those who call him Cassius Clay. Joe Bugner also here. Joey Giardello, Emil Griffiths, great names of the boxing world. And still, of course, interest to see whether Sonny Liston can maybe somehow even at his advanced age find a way back to the top of this sport he's been something of the forgotten man over the last few years and he started well here good combinations going into into Webner's face and there you see the glove just rubbing away in there Webner, who's spoken to the commissioner before the fight urging that he should make sure that the referee doesn't stop this on cuts Referee Barney Felix, he looked after Ali Liston in their first contest back in 1964. Good right hand from Liston. Liston down, but that was no more than a slip. And the referee, of course, sees that, looking to unload that big right hand. Liston, who had that fearsome reputation earlier in his career, went to jail back in 1957 when he uh, had a little bit of an altercation with a policeman beat him up in other words and served his time as a result bit of an untidy brawling sort of opening round the heads boring in there oh good right hand from Liston flash of camera lights and that's the end of the first round which Liston probably just about just about shaded Not too much between them in the second either. We pick up the action in round three. Liston in the striped shorts. The shorter man stands about six foot two and a half. But he's already getting success in this period with that left jab. Oh, another good right hand from Liston. Wetner in there pitching. He's not got good footwork, Chuck Wepner, but he is a brave fighter. Barney Felix having to separate them again. And Liston's back onto the offensive with that jab once more. Still in good condition, Sonny Liston. Weighed in at 15 stone 9 for this fight. Wepner, the heavier man, 16 stone 4. But you can see that Liston, who works out at Johnny Tocco's gym in Las Vegas, has really got himself into good shape for this contest. Not too much science about that attack from Wetner. Liston again jumping in behind that ramrod left jab. He's been something of a, a man frozen out of the heavyweight scene since losing his title. Suffered one defeat since the beating at the hands of Muhammad Ali. And that was against Leotis Martin in 1969. 
Referee letting Liston get away with a lot of work with the head. And a complaint from Wepner. I think suggesting as much as Liston went boring in with his head. And there again you see the clash of heads. Liston, of course, will be only too well aware that Wepner can mark up and cut very, very easily. Good left hand from Wepner. Considering he's got to maybe slightly the shorter reach, Liston really getting through a lot with that jab. Two more rock back the head of Wetner, and again the head goes boring in there. Referee having a little bit of a look and a little bit of a telling off as well for Sonny Liston for use of that head. And there's a cut. A bad cut over the right eye. Well, that was increasingly a problem. And now into round seven. Wetner bleeding, hurt. He's been looked at closely by the referee, Barney Felix. Reginald Farrer is the doctor at ringside. They've all been keeping a close look. And Sonny Liston, piling up the points, is really going to work. The jab's been insistent over the rounds. Rocking back Wepner's head again. The initial cut in the third, probably caused by a clash of heads. Certainly Wepner thought so, and the referee ticked Liston off for the use of his head. But Liston got away with it. And now the superior boxing skills of the former world heavyweight champion carry him towards a fairly emphatic lead. Liston getting in close and again using the head. Wetner trying to unload combinations, but all the time he's trying to keep Liston back away from that damaged face. He's got cuts now around both eyes, and it really is starting to look a blooded mask, his face. The left jab just firing in again and again from Liston. And all the time the damage to the face gets worse. Well, oh, Liston just tagged on the ropes over there. There was a right hand which got through. And just for a second or so, Liston looked a little bit disorganized and Wetner's taken heart from that. He's surely been told by his corner, his manager Al Braverman, that he's got to get out there and somehow find a way to stop Liston. And you can see the blood now pouring down his face. The right eye is in a dreadful state. Good right hand again, though, from Wetner. Such a brave fighter. Liston going in close, and the referee again let him off getting him letting him get away with the use of the head good jab Liston shipping punches again there was a good left uppercut in there and punches thrown after the bell and Wepner taken back to his corner looks a little bit unsteady and they're going to have to have a long look at that injured eye. Feverish work on that injury and the, and the ring doctor going across to have a close look. That's Reginald Farrer. Is the fight going to be called off? It wasn't though. And now we pick it up in round nine. Wetner who pleaded before this fight for it to be allowed to go the distance. He didn't want it to be stopped, but he's on borrowed time now. (laughs) 
Listen, just plodding methodically after him. The one punch power which blasted his way past the likes of Floyd Patterson, maybe no longer there, but let's not forget that Chuck Wepner is a big, strong man. Only down once in his career prior to this, and that was against George Foreman. Liston content to throw the left jab and then work in close. Well, those are good solid body shots from Liston. The head's going in there again, though, into the face of Wepner. And all the time, the big Philadelphian, his face marking up more and more. Minute to go in round nine. And again, the blood now pouring from the right eyebrow and the left eye damaged as well now on Wepner's face. And it's getting worse and worse. Surely this can't go on very much longer. The ringside photographers on the far side almost recoiling at what they're seeing. Al Braverman in the corner for Wepner is urging him forward, telling him to come forward, carry the fight to Liston. It's all very well being brave in the corner. It's Wepner who's out there taking the shots and it's Wepner who is getting the most awful beating around the face. It's going to take some hard work for some surgeon somewhere to repair the damage which has been caused tonight. And we come towards the closing seconds of the ninth round. Wepner surely knows now that the writing is on the wall. That face is a terrible, terrible mess. And the doctor's going over towards the corner and he's going to rule that it's all over. And Sonny Liston wins in what was to be the last fight of his career.